University. But more importantly, she is also our guest speaker because she is the Meet the Editor-in-Chief um, this month for the SAE International Journal of Electrified Vehicles. Now, I do have some information up on the slide here that I will share out with all of the attendees, but I'm actually going to pull up some slides that uh, Simona was kind enough to put together for us, and she's going to walk us through some overview about the journal. Thank you so much, uh, Angela. Uh, good morning, everyone, and, and uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I wanted to thank you and Erin from SAE for having me here today. And I'm very excited to uh, have the opportunity to talk about um, the SA International Journal of Electrified Vehicles. If you can please go to the next slide. Thank you. So I wanted to start off with some history, brief history about this journal. And uh, so this journal was not born this way. And uh, it was uh, uh, established in 2012, and it was formally named as the International Journal of Alternative Powertrains. And this journal ran, uh, ran until 2019. The editor-in-chief was Professor Zara Filippi um, from Clemson University, who was um, uh, back then my uh, former department chair and uh, you know, colleague and, and friend. So uh, in 2020, SAE um, reached out to me and uh, um, they asked me whether or not I wanted to uh, lead uh, this effort. And, uh, and I was very, very happy and excited to, to accept this new task. And they also gave me the uh, opportunity to rename the journal. And they were also um, wondering whether or not we should uh, um, call this journal Journal of Electric Vehicles. And at that time, I was very adamant about uh, really not make this uh, uh, a journal that uh, was only focusing on electric powertrain. I wanted to send out a message to the community, uh, my peers and students and, uh, and uh, folks from industry about the, uh, the fact that, you know, the... Um, there is a big difference between electric and electrified, and uh, we cannot solely rely on electric vehicles as a means to uh, tackle the uh, decarbonization of transportation. And so electric vehicle um, are uh, solely based on uh, having a battery pack with electric motors, one or multiple, and uh, uh, whereas electrified vehicles, you still rely on uh, internal combustion engines and some form of electrification that comes through uh, batteries or uh, supercapacitors or other uh, mechanical energy storage. So I really want this to be a platform to, uh, to discuss um, many of the uh, technologies that are available out there and uh, they can be used to address the um, uh, emission reduction problems that we are uh, addressing uh, these days. And so that's, uh, that's uh, uh, the reason why, uh, you know, the, the name of the new journal is now SA International Journal of Electrified Vehicles. Um, this journal um, accept uh, uh, direct journal submissions only as opposed to what's happening um, uh, previously with the uh, um, former journal of alternative power trades. So formally, initially, uh, what happened was that uh, um, the journal will publish the best paper accepted and presented at some SAE uh, events. And, uh, and those uh, uh, journals were um, basically simply accepted based on recommendations from the um, session organizers, which were relying on uh, recommendations of reviewers uh, that, the, that the conference paper was, uh, was getting. Um, now, this is not happening anymore. And, uh, uh, and the main reason uh, is because uh, if we wanted the, our journal to be considered for an impact factor, and uh, um, and uh, and one uh, there are strict rules uh, to uh, for this to happen. One of which is that um, uh, we cannot. Um, so the main rules is that um, uh, agency that basically issue and release the impact factor uh, uh, are against journals publishing most types of event papers content. And so that's the reason why we all accept uh, direct journal submission. And uh, I'm sharing these slides with the audience. So uh, you can just click on this link to, uh, to submit your uh, manuscript to our journal. So 
if you can please go to the next slide. So, um, thank you. So, uh, what is that we uh, um, want to see in, in our journal? So, we want this uh, uh, platform to be um, a forum where people from industry and academia um, feel uh, um, um, basically comfortable, comfortable to share their uh, ideas uh, about new technologies as they address um, uh, decarbonization of the transportation sector. And so we accept uh, um, manuscript and work related to modeling, control, optimization uh, strategies uh, as they apply to components, subsystems, and, uh, and the power trade itself. And uh, uh, we look at, uh, um, you know, power train, which are either um, fully electrified, fully electric, or, or, or fully electrified, like a, such as hybrid uh, that contains technologies such as uh, start, start and stop, uh, they are charge sustaining hybrid or plug-in hybrid. And we're not limiting ourselves to grand vehicles, but we're also expanding looking at uh, naval uh, uh, vehicles. So how we uh, advertise, for example, a uh, uh, ship. So our journals is, uh, uh, as well as uh, many other essay international journals are indexed. And, and those are the sources where um, this journal is indexed is being indexed and this is a very important information especially for a uh, young professor or you know tenure professor that uh, uh, want to know uh, uh, where this journal what is the impact of uh, their manuscript when submitted and accepted in our journal the areas of current focus are listed here. Um, those are quite broad area of, uh, of uh, focus, and they span from uh, fuel cell uh, um, for uh, vehicle propulsion and range extenders, model-based diagnostics and prognostics of uh, electrified vehicles, uh, battery, where battery is a big uh, umbrella that uh, um, can refer to, for example, uh, charging strategies or charging station or um, health estimation of uh, a battery pack and uh, uh, interconnected cells to form battery pack and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, we uh, also um, like to publish uh, um, works related to energy management strategies in hybrid vehicles, hybrid electric or fuel uh, cell-based vehicles, and uh, uh, as well as uh, layout design uh, strategies for uh, hybrid system uh, topologies and, uh, um, and uh, uh, also, as I, as I mentioned earlier, ship propulsion systems. Uh, we also would like to have more, for example, more uh, contributions related to hybrid energy storage systems. For example, when you combine uh, different lithium-ion battery chemistries uh, to create a, a, a hybridized energy storage system. For example, you combine lead acid batteries with uh, um, uh, lithium-ion batteries for uh, uh, your electric powertrain. Uh, I have the um, um, real pleasure to work with uh, uh, a great group of associate editors. As of today, we have 17 associate editors as compared to 12 uh, from a couple of years ago. And, uh, um, and uh, um, associate editors uh, who serve our journal are from um, uh, US. Europe and uh, and China, and uh, each of our social editors is specialized in a um, specific uh, topic as it relates to electrified vehicles, and uh, um, and uh, uh, they are very. I have to say, I want to thank them to for the great help and service that they are giving to the to the journal. One question that I get asked uh, um, quite a lot. Um, is whether or not our journal has a publication fees. And uh, the good news is that we don't have any publication fee, as well as we don't have page limits. So uh, that's a pretty substantial difference from other journals. 
uh, um, that, for example, have some very strict uh, page limits or they charge extra for any additional page that goes above the uh, nominal limit. Now, the only exception to this rule is that if you want to see your journal, your manuscript uh, in open access, there is an $800 uh, US fee that uh, needs to be paid. Our journal, uh, as well as uh, other essay journals, um, are both print and electronic publications. So what that means is that um, we offer others the e-first version of their publication uh, before they can get the printed copy. And the only um, difference between the e-first um, copy and the printed copy is the uh, page number. So besides that, everything stays the same. It first comes with a DOI, so the paper can be referenced and can be cited and uh, so it's, uh, for um, practical purposes is your final version of the paper. So I would like to share some statistics about the journal since I uh, became editor-in-chief. So uh, in 2020, we received um, a total of submissions of 45. Uh, and in 2021, uh, we, uh, we got 55 total uh, um, submissions. Paper accepted went from 21 to 17. And uh, the rejected papers were from, went from 13 to 20. Uh, we're talking about from 2020 to 2021. Uh, overall, we published two issues in 2020, uh, two issues uh, that accounted for a total of 12 papers. And in 2021, we had uh, still two issues, but with 16 papers. So, um, um, so we, what we can see is that submissions have been trending upwards. So in 2023, we're thinking about um, publishing three issues. And uh, uh, one thing that I wanted to also bring to your attention is that uh, the number of accepted and rejected papers won't necessarily add up to the total number of papers submitted in a year. And that's because, for example, you can submit your paper in 2019, um, the paper can be accepted in 2020 and be published in 2021. So there is this type of dynamics that you need to account for when you look at those uh, um, numbers. One point of uh, um, improvement that we uh, we can uh, uh, I wanted to um, uh, discuss is the average number of days from submission to our first decisions. Uh, in 2020 uh, was uh, 46 days, and we uh, we could uh, uh, bring that number down to 42 in 2021. Our purpose, our goal, is to really bring that down to uh, 21 days. Um, so we're working hard with all our social editors to make this happen. So we talk about 2020, 2021, 2023, but uh, let's see what's happening 2022. I have some exciting um, news to share with you. So in th this year, we will have two issues. The first one will be uh, published in April uh, and it will contain 10 articles. And the second issue will uh, formally be published in September. Um, although you can access the papers uh, of issues two already on uh, through eFirst. So you can log in and, uh, and download the papers in the electronic form. So the, I want to spend a few words about the second issue, um, the papers on the second issues. Those are papers that have been collected into a special issue that was uh, uh, created and uh, finalized last year. Uh, and the special issue uh, was on uh, uh, advanced learning and data analytics method for electrified, electrified vehicles. And uh, I have to thank uh, our associate editor, uh, Xia Sang um, Hu, and uh, um, Bin uh, Shu is now an assistant professor at Oklahoma University uh, for um, doing such a great uh, job here. So um, I, will, I really encourage all of you guys to go there and uh, uh, to uh, eFirst first and download the papers. This is a very nice collection of uh, state-of-the-art state work uh, that revolve around uh, reinforcement learning, data analytics method that designed to, for example, improve uh, um, and create energy management strategies in uh, HEVs, uh, design instead of charge estimation techniques for battery pack um, assessment and uh, uh, 
uh, or designing thermal control strategies using uh, reinforcement learning for battery pack and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited about these special issues. And I also wanted to say that um, special issues are a great way to get, um, for example, um, assistant professor, young professor involved in our, um, in our journal and also in our community. As our editor-in-chief, I have the uh, pleasure and uh, to nominate the Colwell Merit Award. Um, uh, this is an award that is given annually and it recognizes the authors of papers of outstanding technical and professional merit. Um, and so I, uh, when I was asked to nominate the Colwell Merit Award paper, I went through all the, um, you know, the, the, the papers that had been uh, published uh, that year. And uh, I didn't have any doubt about uh, uh, which one I wanted to choose for this award. And uh, this paper that I selected is by uh, Braden No, who at the time of submission was a high school student. And what uh, um, uh, this high schooler did in this paper was to develop uh, uh, technically sound models to combine and integrate um, supercapacitors and batteries in an electric drivetrain. And on top of that, he carry out a very um, clear and, uh, um, and uh, um, detailed uh, simulation studies with sensitivity analysis. And on top of that, he concluded the paper by uh, providing experimental validation of his approach. So I thought this was a very um, outstanding contribution to our journal. Uh, a few words about copy editing guidelines. Um, this is maybe some some of you might already know all of this. Some some others might uh, might not. So I thought to bring this up to your attention. So during the production process, uh, all articles go through a low level uh, copy edit to fix uh, um, minor errors such as spelling, grammar, um, spacing, punctuation, and uh, also proper reference use. And uh, this is done before proofs are sent to the authors. Now, if the manuscript has more severe errors uh, that we believe are disruptive to the flow of the paper, uh, what we do is send the authors an email saying that uh, they should ask for some um, help, either a native English speaker or a professional language editing service to review and their paper. Uh, without such a revision, uh, the paper might not be accepted. So that's a very important to keep the quality of our papers high and uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, um, readable and uh, um, uh, the message in the paper is accepted uh, without any uh, disruption. So um, there is a list of, uh, if you can please go to the next slide, Angela, thank you. Uh, there is a list of editing services that uh, um, can be used. We don't endorse or subscribe uh, for any of those. Uh, the, this is just a list that might be useful uh, to have in mind in case you fall into these uh, problems. And uh, it's not just for our journal, this can be useful also for, uh, to know also for other, um, if you submit your manuscript to other journals for which you get this type of message. And, um, and uh, yes, I would like to conclude with, uh, uh, I would like to give a, a big uh, shout out to Jonathan New, he's our managing editor. And my um, job as an editor-in-chief has been, it's been really easy uh, thanks to his help and uh, proactive uh, um, support and uh, on you know, everyday um, operations. So thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much for pulling all of that information together. That was incredibly helpful. Um, I also have to circle back. I know we talked about it previously, the high school student that submitted to the journal. That's so impressive. Um, it is. It is. <laughs> Do you commonly, have you worked with many high school students in the past that have just excelled and published in uh, those forms of technology? Not, not at this level. I did yeah. work with high school students, both when I was at Clemson and here at Stanford. And uh, yeah. I can tell you that you can uh, find uh, incredibly uh, talented students at that stage, at that age, but uh, uh, none of the ones I work with was at that uh, stage, you know, that they could publish a journal paper by themselves. 
Right. Yeah. He must have felt really proud to, to win that yeah. award as well. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I just had a couple questions just to kind of follow up. I know you covered a great deal on it. And thank you again for doing on the Journal of Electroid Vehicles. I know um, we just recently, I think in 2019, you know, rebranded it as Electrified Vehicles. And I, I also appreciated that you talked about how it's not just a scope of ground vehicle, but covers a lot of different sectors, which I think is an important point. Um, are there any specific technical areas the journal hasn't yet touched on, but you would like to? Yeah, um, yeah, there are a few areas uh, mm -hmm. that we haven't uh, yet touched. Uh, and for example, um, you know, naval um, technology. So, you know, electrification is spreading so, uh, so fast in many uh, engineering fields. And so naval is one of those. And so hybridizing ship is one of the uh, things that is happening. So I would like to see more contributions in that um, area. Um, some other areas that I think we could uh, um, really benefit from here, um, uh, from our um, you know industry and uh, academia um, uh, people is the uh, hybridization of energy storage technologies. Mm -hmm. um, especially in lieu of the fact that uh, uh, different applications requires uh, different uh, um, modes of operations and different uh, uh, characteristics to the energy storage. So does it make sense to hybridize energy storage? If so, in what manner and what are pros and cons you know, of integrating uh, different components and uh, operating them over a long period of time? Um, mm -hmm. I also would like, for example, to to see more contributions on methods. And uh, um, uh, for example, we had these uh, wonderful special issues that focused on uh, uh, machine learning, reinforcement learning, and advanced learning for electrified vehicles. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, papers that we published so far in our journal were uh, mostly on uh, uh, formal uh, physics-based modeling tools. Each of those two approaches have pros and cons. So what I think uh, we, we would like to see, what I would like to see more is uh, uh, what are the benefits of combining both, how we can tackle the um, weaknesses of uh, uh, either going full physics space or full uh, uh, data driven, and uh, what we gain by uh, um, basically providing uh, uh, tools that uh, mix and merge the benefits of both. So hybrid, um, um, you know, machine learning plus physics-based modeling approach is what I would like to see more. Okay. Well, anybody listening to the interview then, that's your cue to start submitting. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> my next question, um, were there any special issues for this journal that we can anticipate in 20, 2022 that you were especially excited about? So we are trying to work on putting together a special issue on digital twin. Right. So that's another area actually of, of interest. We haven't seen much, uh, not just in our journal, but um, around on digital twin for automotive applications. Um, and I think we have an opportunity here for digital twin when it comes to uh, look at battery pack for hybrid vehicles, sorry, for electric vehicles mostly. Uh, battery packs are the most expensive component in electric um, electric vehicles. So, uh, what is um, what are the um, the challenges in uh, building a, a digital twin around that battery pack? Um, you know, and uh, how can we go around using uh, some of the tools that have been developed, for example, in aerospace, and bring the, uh, those in in this um, uh, context? And what are the things that needs to be developed from scratch? in terms of, for example, uh, integration of high fidelity and low fidelity control-oriented model and, uh, um, the, um, and how those two basically relate and combine with physical measurements, actuation and sensing. And uh, so I would like to, I'm working on organizing a, a special issues on digital twin this year. So you might see more about it, uh, about this topic, yeah. Mm, very cool. Um... So I had just one more question, and I thought you do a really good job when we talk about that a lot with journals and technical papers, why it's important not only to read that research, but also publish in that research. Uh, from an academic standpoint, though, you know, especially with you working as an associate professor at Stanford, um, <clears throat> how would you su suggest a student or faculty member utilize some of these articles from this specific journal? 
Absolutely. Uh, that's a great question. Um, so I say journals are traditionally more uh, applied. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, nonetheless, uh, what I love about these journals uh, is that uh, there is a, um, a very um, uh, great participation from industry. So uh, I think uh, what we can learn uh, in academia from reading papers in this journal is what is the current uh, uh, practice um, mm -hmm. in, uh, in industry and whether or not there are uh, places that we can uh, work on to improve that current practice. So how can we bring the method, the rigorous method, the theory we develop, we learn here in class, for example, in our uh, research lab to improve and enhance uh, uh, some technologies that are being used in industry. So, um, and at the same time, industry can learn from, uh, um, uh, you know, from, uh, uh, from those type of contributions to understand how they can uh, bring that knowledge back to the uh, R&D that they are developing. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. Excellent. Um, well, thank you again for pulling together all the slides. I'm going to share them out with the attendees today and yes. for taking the time to do this interview. I know your schedule is really hectic and I just really appreciate it. I think that, um, you know, a lot of our engineering groups that read these journals, it's beneficial to hear from the editors in chief. So thank you for that. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Angela. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.